Welcome to Euro PCR 2023. My name is Robert Byrne from Dublin, Ireland, and I'm delighted to be joined by Fernando Alfonso from Hospital La Princesa in Madrid, Spain. Fernando, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. So we've had a lot of interest at this meeting on drug-coated balloon angioplasty. It's a technology that's been around now for some years, but I think a lot of the discussion in this meeting was surrounding the use in de novo disease, and that's what we'd like to discuss today. So for you, what are the areas that you think are most suited to drug-coated balloon angioplasty when you talk just about de novo lesions? Yeah, well, thank you, Rob. I mean, this is a, a major interest in this meeting has been going on on this subject. Uh, we know from uh, uh, the guidelines that drug-coating balloons should be used in patients with extreme stenosis. There is plenty of data on that. And these guidelines are not telling us to use drug-coating balloons in the novel lesions. So having said that, when do we like to use this, uh, uh, this technology in the novel lesions? Well, basically, uh, when we uh, are not very keen with the possibility of using drug gluten stents. Mm -hmm. And this will be a small vessel disease, diffuse disease, perhaps STEMI, side branches, and patients at high bleeding risk. So that will be the main, uh, the main scenarios where this technology is very attractive. Yeah. So what about diffuse disease for you? Um, you know, anecdotally, it's something we're seeing a little bit more of maybe the type of patients that we're treating are older, have mo more comorbidities, and it's often a, a, a disease pattern or complexity where we're looking for good solutions. Is, is this a, a sensible use of DCB, in yeah. your opinion? I mean, this is, this is diffuse disease for me is like two things, a small vessel disease and then long and diffuse disease. Uh, for uh, a small vessel disease, there is a strong data. There is data uh, coming from Basket Small suggesting that this is a very good uh, strategy for small vessels. And there is also data from Picoletto too suggesting that if you do a late angiographic follow-up in this patient, the results are very good. So there is strong evidence in this regard. Now, for diffuse disease, uh, perhaps the idea and now is changing a little bit, so you don't need to stick to a technology, stand or drag or balloon, and you can use what is now a kind of trendly come uh, blended strategy. So you can use a, a, a stem perhaps for the more tight or proximal part of the artery and then this diffuse disease that you don't like to stand, you can treat that with, uh, with drug gluten balloon. And there is plenty of interest in this strategy where the best of the two worlds can be uh, obtained. And this is, uh, uh, there is less randomized data on uh, diffuse disease, but there is good uh, amount of evidence supporting the, the, the use of uh, drug gluten balloons in uh, small vessels. Yeah, and I suppose this blended or hybrid approach, like you say, there's not so much evidence, but it makes clinical sense. In terms of small vessels, there's more evidence, but what's the cutoff or what, in your mind, uh, comprises uh, a lesion in a small vessel? Well, this is, uh, uh, I mean, there are papers on that and there is a consensus document. My personal opinion is that should be everything below three. I mean, if we are using a 3.0 device, I, I, would, I, I wouldn't be... Uh, keen calling this small vessel. Mm -hmm. So everything below three, uh, I would say 2.75 is good enough. Uh, this is the world of uh, a small, uh, a mm -hmm. small vessels to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, bifurcation disease was something we heard a lot about some years ago. Uh, since then, there's more of a focus maybe on small uh, vessels or diffuse disease. Where, where do you think we stand at the moment on uh, DCB for bifurcation lesions? Well, uh, there are some randomized studies, uh, and again, there are like two strategies here. So there are some people saying, well, a bifurcation, the best thing you can do if, if you are able to obtain a good result after predilation is to use a drug eluting, uh, drug coating balloon strategy alone, mm -hmm. both in the main vessel and then in the side branch, because this allows, you know, the remodeling of the vessel, the positive remodeling and all the benefit. Uh, another uh, group of people and investigators will say, well, let's fix first the main, uh, the main branch and then use provisional stenting. And why not to finish always this provisional stenting strategy using a drug coating balloon in the side branch? Mm -hmm. And there is uh, data suggesting that this is a good uh, uh, alternative to just a provisional stenting uh, balloon. So the two strategies are growing and, and many, many people are using those in everyday clinical case to address those complex lesions. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And maybe then a word on myocardial infarction. So acute myocardial infarction, <clears throat> Uh, STEMI, high thrombus burden, is this uh, a setting that makes sense for you or you're a, a bit more uh, reluctant in that scenario? Yeah. Well, uh, again, this is a, a very attractive setting, but there is uh, something which is important to remember. I mean, thrombus is not a good, uh, uh, a good interplay uh, to, uh, to have uh, the thrombus in the, in the vessel wall so that the drug perhaps is not able to reach the artery. So in the situation of STEMI, uh, I think first you need to uh, predilate, then you need to remove thrombus, and you are satisfied with the initial result of predilation, this is a good strategy. There are data using drug coating balloon with a uh, uh, bare metal stand. This is data coming from Spain. And there is also data suggesting <clears throat> that drug coating balloon alone can be as good as a new generation drug gluten stand. And this, uh, there is a, a, a very interesting study using FFR, a follow-up, as the primary endpoint, which is very interesting. So we need to, uh, we are looking for a functional result in that vessel that already suffered a myocardial infarction. Okay, final one, and maybe to put you on the spot, do you think looking forward, are we going to be still reliant on paclitaxel coated balloons <clears throat> or do you think serolimus coated balloons will play a meaningful uh, role over the longer term? Well, there is uh, a major body of evidence supporting the value of plaquetaxel uh, eluting uh, uh, balloons. I mean, plaquetaxel is lipophilic and all uh, the technology until now is being focusing on the use of plaquetaxel with good results, yeah. uh, mainly in steroid stenosis, but also in the novel issues. Now, the, uh, you know, the, the concern about plaquetaxel uh, never existed in the coronary artery, but yeah. this is something for the periphery, so this is not an issue. But in most interventional cardiologists' mentality, uh, well, we still think that limus could be a better agent uh, as a pharmac pharmacological agent for these uh, uh, lesions. The problem with limos is that until now we were unable to uh, adequate it, uh, uh, adequately obtain a, a, a good concentration at the vessel wall yeah. because this is not lipophilic. So there, there has been different attempts with uh, nanocarriers and different uh, um, uh, coatings so that limos could uh, be delivered to the vessel wall. So I'll now, put you on the spot. Do, you, do you think that we'll uh, that we'll we'll find a way to get a very effective serolimus coated balloon? I think with this crystalline, pure crystalline limus, and there is data with serolimus, and there is also data coming with everolimus, there is a good chance that we will get enough a concentration at the vessel wall so that we can replicate the results obtained with plaquetaxel. To me, the question is whether or not this is going to be better. Yeah. With whether or not this is going to be better. And uh, coming to the first question, Rob, which is the uh, why guidelines are not there, a couple of years ago, we performed a meta-analysis of all randomized clinical trials yes. uh, in the novel issues. Yeah. And we compare, uh, so all these trials obviously were focused in selected lesions, but where the two strategies uh, uh, could be a good option. So if you put all these uh, patients together, that was more than 2,500 patients, the results, as compared with the other technologies, were that TLR was similar when we use a drug coating balloon yeah. as compared with alternative. Yeah. TLR was better when yeah. the alternative was bare metal stent, but TLR was not worse when the alternative was drug eluting stent. It was a safety, mm -hmm. a safety issue regarding yeah. myocardial infarction. So the safety is, I think, is very, very, very important. Yeah. Nowadays, there are plenty of trials, and as you know, there are also trials with limus that are, you know, are trying to see if uh, we can improve second generation uh, drug coating balloons yeah. with limus is going to be better. Yeah, I mean, I think there's uh, studies available. Uh, what we're missing is the really large scale trials that we have taken as normal in other areas yeah. of coronary intervention, drug eluting stents, uh, TAVI, but the good news, I suppose, is these trials are ongoing, so we'll uh, soon have an answer to that question in really large sample yeah. sizes. So this is a little, uh, perhaps, the explanation why the FDA has not yet approved this for uh, the uh, coronary uh, space, yes. whereas in Europe we got that information from many randomized trials and for also for meta-analysis is strong enough to give a 1A recommendation yes. uh, for in stenosis stenosis, and I think soon we will have a recommendation from the novel. Yeah. 
So it's sometimes difficult to believe in 2023 that patients in the United States still don't have access to drug-coated balloon angioplasty, but there are a number of IDE trials ongoing, and hopefully as well that's a situation that will change soon. So, Fernando, thanks very much for a very interesting discussion, certainly a topic of debate uh, throughout the meeting this year. De novo lesions, drug-coated balloon angioplasty, diffuse disease, small vessels, bifurcation, acute myocardial infarction, and uh, further evidence in the Limus versus Paclitaxel-coated balloon uh, debate. So, thanks for sharing your insights today. Thank you, Rob.